Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, June 13th, and it is a slightly overcast, possibly drizzly day here in southeastern Pennsylvania, but that's okay. We take what we can get. Uh, it's nice that it's cooled off some, so that's a good deal. Favorite basket billiard. Sweet Vanilla Honeydew by Dan Tobacco. This was a gift from my, my buddy, the Durham Duke, and I enjoy it. It's uh, often on the weekends I'll have a an aromatic blend in the morning, and uh, this is it's usually autumn evening, but this uh, Sweet Vanilla Honeydew is, is good stuff, and the tobacco comes through. A lot of the Dan Tobaccos are, are like that. They're aromatics. It, you, it's not it's not over topped good stuff so if you saw my video on Wednesday you know I had a bit of a health scare and I wanted to talk a bit about that because there's a story involved I want to tell the story but um, you know what happened was just personally overwhelming to me I I uh, wound up in the ER on Tuesday, I think. I've already lost track of what day is what. No, I think it was Wednesday. No, that doesn't make sense because I wouldn't have been able to make that. Oh, I don't know what day it was. It was probably Wednesday. Anyway, I wound up in the ER. <laughs> and, you know, I, I put stuff up on Instagram all the time. And, and sometimes it's just silly stuff like, you know, I'm out at a restaurant or something. And I thought, oh, well, this will make some interesting videos. So I... I you know, took a picture of the uh, the IV line and the bracelets, you know, the hospital bracelets on my arm, and I stuck them up on Instagram and said, you know, everything's fine. But this and the outpouring of love and support and prayer that I got over the next couple of days was unbelievable. And you know, it's fully expected from you guys, but my goodness, I. Uh, I was really lifted up by that, and it helped me get through a uh, you know a difficult experience. Uh, so I, I want to be blunt about this: everything's fine. There's nothing life-threatening going on here. It was a, a glitch. A glitch? Yeah. Um, I started last weekend having heart palpitations, just like I'd suddenly go, "Ah, what's going on there?" And I noticed my heart would race. You know, I'd. I'd just suddenly jump up 20 beats per minute. I can I can track the rate on this thing. And I thought, well, that's that's kind of odd. But I don't know what to do about that. So I went to see the doctor. I went to see the doctor, my, my primary care doctor, on Tuesday, I believe. I'm sorry, for some reason the days just are not lining up for me right now. But I think it was Tuesday that I went to see my primary care doctor. Now, I used to have a fantastic primary care doctor. Yeah, I haven't had a doctor like this since I was a little kid. Um, good, solid, traditional family care doctor. He was two blocks away from me. I could, I could walk to his office. Um, could get an appointment the same day without any issue. And the guy saved my life because he helped uh, with uh, my cancer diagnosis. You know, at a time when I think a lot of other doctors would have said, ah, that can't possibly be cancer, just forget about it. He said, ah, let's get this checked out. And I think he saved my life. So I love the guy. I really, really thought he was a fantastic doctor. And a couple of years ago, the son of a gun went and retired on me. So he transferred his patients to another doctor. And let me start off by saying this new doctor, my current primary care physician, he's a good man. He cares. Um, I've had some long conversations with him, not just about myself, but about other aspects of his practice. Um, I'm 
in research science and the pharmaceutical industry and so we we would talk of, we've talked about some some sort of sort of common areas of interest and I don't want to get into too much detail on that but I you know by and large I like the guy he works very hard uh, he works long hours he tries really hard to get you in the same day if something comes up and he's always gotten me in the same day his staff is caring and uh, for the most part I, I enjoy interacting with them uh, he has a lot of rotating staff which I don't quite understand because you know he's a relatively I guess he's not a small practice but he's not you know in some big city he's, he's you know we're, we're out in in the the uh, near boondock suburbs here but you know every time I go there'll be a different uh, student from one of the local universities that's you know in medical school but sort of doing a rotation through his his office and you know I'll see them and they, they tend to be very nice and very competent uh, he'll have these um, I guess you call them transcriptionists the, these um, typically young girls that will come in and, and like type while he's talking and it, that's a bit silly because they don't seem to have any medical training so he's always stopping to spell words and things like that but anyway he's every interaction I've had there up until this past Tuesday has been great so I called them up and I said I'm having these heart palpitations I don't know what's going on got me in that day like three hours later I'm, I'm in his office no wait go straight back saw a very nice young doctor to be uh, who you know asked all the right questions took my vitals did did everything you would expect uh, talked to me about the possibility of getting a halter monitor um, it talked about medications and asked whether you know I had changed medications all, all the kind of things you expect And he said, okay, the doc will be with you in a few minutes. So I sat there, and, you know, they closed the exam room door because he's got, I don't know, maybe four exam rooms. And I wait uh, maybe about five minutes. And the door opens. And I'm not looking when the door opens. And I hear my doctor's voice saying, I'm so sorry uh, for the wait, which was not really a very significant wait. And I look up and I say, oh, that's okay. And he comes walking into the room. He's wearing a baseball cap, which is odd. You know, it wasn't actually a baseball cap. It was a baseball style cap. I don't remember what was on it, but, and he's got it pulled all the way down and like slanted off to one side. And he's walking with his head down and he goes over to the sink to wash his hands. And he says, I'm sick. I'm really sick. And I said, oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. Now, he's he's wearing a mask. Uh, in Pennsylvania, we don't need to wear masks anymore, but the office requested that I do. And, you know, I understand it's a doctor's office. So <clears throat> so I'm wearing mine, and he's he's got a surgical mask on. And he, he comes and he sits down. And he says, um, so you're, you're having heart palpitations. And I said, yeah. And he slips that little thing over my finger that measures your pulse and your, your oxygen and, and all. And he says, do you have a cardiologist? Now the whole time he's looking down at the floor. I have not made eye contact with him. He's got this hat pulled down over his head. And I said, yes, I, I, I do see a cardiologist. Uh, I gave the name of the cardiologist. Uh, he, he tilts his head up and he makes eye contact with me. I was expecting like red eyes or something. Perfectly normal, no no obvious issue. And he says, do you like him? Actually, he said, do you like her? I'm trying to give as little information out about my doctors as I can here. <laughs> I doubt any of them watch this, but I have a great deal of respect for all of them. Do you like her? Yes. Okay, you should go see her. And he stands up and says, takes the thing off my finger, stands up and says, Th thanks for coming in today. And he walks towards the door. 
And I said, okay, I hope you feel better. And he responds with something like, I hope so too. And he walks out and closes the door. <laughs> so I, I waited a few minutes, but I guess I was done. And I got up and I went out into the hallway and I went around to the receptionist. And she said, any follow-up? And I said, no, I'm just going to go see my cardiologist. And he said, okay, you don't need a referral. That was my doctor's visit. Uh... I don't know what was going on. You know, I honestly don't know. It was very strange. And I think, first off, if he was... I mean, the one thing that seems possible is maybe he had a really bad migraine headache and the light was bothering him. That, that's a possibility. But, you know, if you're that sick and you're a doctor, maybe you shouldn't see patients that day. And part of me says, okay, but he's so dedicated to his patients that he didn't want to do that. Well, all right. But he didn't actually provide me with any care. You know, he could have listened to my heart, you know, get out the stethoscope and listened. He didn't. Uh, he never trusts anyone to take my blood pressure. He always double checks that. He didn't do that. Uh, I don't know. It, it, was a, it was kind of an upsetting uh, experience, to be honest. Because it had me kind of questioning his... I hate to say this, but his, his sanity um, this was an odd, very odd situation. So that was Tuesday, I think. Uh, Wednesday, I get up, I do all the stuff I do in the morning, I come down here, I'm, you know, feeling the same pretty much. And I, I worked at my, my day job until uh, around noon. And then I said, okay, time to go get some lunch. And I, I climb up the basement steps. I got to the top of the steps. My heart was really racing. So I check it on the, on the watch. And, you know, normally I'm resting like 60, 70 beats per minute. I'm up to 120, which is okay. You know, in exercise, that's a reasonable range. But I'm not exercising. I just walked up a flight of steps. And you know, I walked over to the counter to start getting my lunch together. And I had to grab the counter to hold myself up. And I was very lightheaded. And I said, okay, this, there's something wrong here. So I called my wife and I said, you know, I think I need to go over to the hospital. I had to put up with a whole string of I told you so. It's because she wanted me to go to the hospital last weekend. And I didn't um, go to the hospital. It was a fantastic experience. The, the the staff were wonderful. She, my wife has really bad allergies, and she was having a, an allergy attack. She dropped me off, and she went to get some allergy medicine. So I checked in by myself, and you know, got wound up in a, actually on a gurney in the hallway because they were so busy. Multiple people came to check on me. You know, orderlies, nurses, uh, got an EKG within probably five minutes of walking into the, to the hospital. Uh, really just fantastic uh, care at this hospital. I, I, was, I was very impressed with it. Uh, friendly nurses and, and orderlies. I, I talked to a lot of them while I was waiting for my wife to show up. Uh, we talked about uh, how busy they were and COVID and how COVID had affected them and you know all that kind of stuff. It was an interesting conversation. And uh, my wife arrives, and I got a couple of tests. And, you know, in the end, it was just, we don't know. We, there, there doesn't seem to be anything wrong. Uh, one concern that I had, and my wife had and brought up, because, you know, I'm a guy, so I don't bring these things up, is that, and you might remember I've talked about this uh, probably five years ago now, I had a... Um, a pulmonary embolism that occurred as a so this is a post-cancer thing having cancer puts you at a higher risk for a pulmonary embolism having chemotherapy puts you at a higher risk uh smoking puts you at a higher risk and it's the nicotine it's not you know so pipe smoking cigar smoking those things put you at a higher risk being overweight which uh i am and was at the time although i'm getting better so, you know, I had all these risks and I got diagnosed with this because uh, I had I just had a pain in my chest. When I breathed in deeply, I got this sharp pain. And uh, my oncologist thought this could be an issue, had me get a scan. Next thing you know, I'm in 
hospital bed. It was amazing how quickly they figured this out. So the, the thing with a pulmonary embolism is you get them and they either kill you or they stay there. That's, and those are the options. So I was lucky. I had the one that stayed there. And, you know, once they're there, they don't go anywhere. They just sit there. You know, there's nothing that's going to happen. But I'm, take, I'm taking blood thinners, have been for, for five years. And so there was this concern that there might have been a recurrence. Now, I've never missed the blood thinners. I'm really religious about taking those. But they said, okay, let's, let's do a CAT scan and make sure. So I get the CAT scan. If you've never had a CAT scan for, uh, for pulmonary embolism, it's, it's an experience because they give you a contrast agent that there's no easy way to say this. It makes you feel like you've wet your pants. Um, it's the strangest thing. You get this warmth in your stomach that just like flows down into your crotch and it, it really feels like you you wet yourself. You, you did. So that happens and uh, yeah, I got to wait an hour for them to read the results and an hour later the doctor comes in and says, you know, everything is clear and they fortunately had previous films to compare to because they have to do that comparison because, you know, they want to see if it grew or shrunk or whatever. It's not supposed to shrink. And he said, not only don't you have a pulmonary embolism, but your old one is gone. It's dissolved. So you're actually better off than we thought. So, you know, all good news. And they, they put me on a halter monitor, which if you don't know, it's a little box that has EKG leads and it measures your heart activity for 24 hours or sometimes longer, but this was a 24 hour monitor. And you keep a little paper diary of, you know, if you have any symptoms, what you're doing at the time, what the symptoms are in the actual time. I dropped that off at the hospital 24 hours later. My cardiologist called me. Uh, the next day, and they, you know, the earliest they can get me in is uh, June 24th, so it's, it's a bit of a wait, but they assured me that they will read the results of this monitor, and if there's anything to worry about, they'll call me immediately. I don't think it's anything terrible, but, you know, when something like that happens, it's scary, and I think I did the right thing, because it, it could have been could have been something else. Uh, and by the way, cardiac enzymes were fine. No evidence of a, of a heart attack or anything like that. Yeah, so I'm at an age where I got to worry about these things. Uh, you know, I, I can't just ignore them. And I didn't. I did for a while, but I, I ultimately, <laughs> ultimately didn't. And uh, yeah, so here I am. And everything's fine and everything's good. But I thought you'd enjoy that. Uh, well, I thought you'd want to know, but I thought you'd enjoy the doctor story. I don't know what I'm going to do about that. I got to find a new doctor, I guess. I want to thank you again, everyone, for all the the care, uh, support, the prayers, the, the well wishes. I greatly appreciate it. They they really helped me through uh, what was you know a stressful time. And you guys are great. You really are. Uh, I've had the privilege of being able to do the same for some of you and to share when, when other folks are in need and to experience firsthand how that happens and how quickly it happens. It, it just overwhelmed me. So thank you for that, everyone. All right, we're running a bit long here, but I got something important. Uh, this coming Friday, I am taking the day off. I was going to be in Pittsburgh and I'm not going to be in Pittsburgh anymore, but I'm just going to try to take it easy for a while, and you know, I'm sort of slowing down this week, and I'm not going to do the Friday live stream. Fortunately, I've already got a guest host, and it is a fantastic guest host. We have got uh, Flat Cat Piper and Lady Fire are going to do a live stream at 8 p.m. on Friday night, so my time slot, but on their channel. So you got to go and subscribe to them. you got to hit the notification bell so that you know when they're going to start streaming. Now, they do great live streams. You probably have seen them, but if you haven't, get over there and subscribe to them. I'll put a link in the description to their channel. Uh, they do a lot of tin openings and, you know, tobacco review type videos. And for this video, uh, Flat Cap got in touch and he said, you know, he wished he had some Carter, uh, he wished he had some Haunted Bookshop, but he doesn't. But he does have a new fresh tub of, of the Dominican Carter Hall that they haven't opened yet, and they're going to open for this uh, Friday night live stream. So I, I appreciate the thought there. That's going to be fantastic. And I'm not going to watch it because it's their show. And I, I want you guys to 
go and see it because it's their show. I'll watch the rerun later. I'm not going to be in the chat room or anything. But uh, I want you to go and show them the same support that you show me. These guys are stepping in to do me a favor. I want all of you to do me a favor and go and treat their live stream just like you're, you're watching one of mine. So, with that, guys, uh, I think we're going to tie this up. Don't know what I'm going to do today. Might do a little bit of yard work if the rain holds off. Uh, might do nothing. We shall see. I hope you've all had a fantastic weekend and looking forward to a great week ahead. I will come back on Wednesday uh, with a short video, um, and uh, then I'll then I'll be off for the weekend. So you all guys, uh, you all guys. You guys all take care, <laughs> and uh, I'll talk to you soon. Bye now.